I feel like I linger. What is going on, beautiful people of YouTube? We are back. This is what, week four? Week four. This is week four. So we went through the first phase, which was three weeks of super intense training. Again, the whole goal throughout this whole process is to get stronger, to gain some lean muscle, and to lose body fat. However, I do want to clarify one thing. The purpose of the whole fat loss segment in all of this is because in the first session of this YouTube series that we started doing, we got my body fat measured and my body fat was at 22%. So I do want to clarify that the reason I want to get to 16 to 18% is not because I need it. It's not because I don't like my body the way it is. It's just because it gives me a goal to have at the gym. And it's really good having a goal because it's all about having a purpose, having a vision, having a set plan. Because trust me, if you don't have a set plan, whether it's in life, whether it's at the gym, whatever it is, you don't really get anything accomplished. So just to clarify that, because I don't want to put myself out there, you know, as just a person that is trying to take care of my outside. Obviously I work on my inside as well and I wanna be clear that I clearly don't feel like I need to lose a ton of body fat. However, it is a goal to have in the gym. So if you're you know, in the similar, on a similar boat and you wanna gain some lean muscle and lose some body fat, this series is definitely for you. But even if it's not, we're gonna help you guys design a program today. So we were trying to figure out what topic to cover today. And so the topic is gonna be how to design a program for fat loss. Fat loss also meaning that to get to your fat loss goal, you are focusing on weight, not just cardio, and therefore you are putting on more lean muscle, getting stronger, and losing body fat at the same time because the truth is we don't want to just be at the gym doing cardio and like maybe that's going to help you lose body fat but to maintain and to change your body composition as a whole you do need to focus on the weights and that is you know what we've basically been covering in this whole series so today's episode is going to be all about designing a program for fat loss so I'm super excited because now that we're entering a new phase in my training, uh, we're basically like defining the purpose of the next phase. And so Malcolm, which is my strength coach, you guys already know, is gonna basically take us through his process when he's designing my program, as well as like when you're designing a program for somebody with similar goals. We're gonna break it down to the points that you need to focus on mainly when you are designing a program for fat loss, right? Yep. And I like what you said. You said there has to be a purpose principle. Just like with anything in life, I feel like you need to have that purpose, right? Yeah, so when you go into the gym, what's going to be the end game? What do you want to accomplish within mm -hmm. what time frame? So that's the question that I always ask. And there's different strength qualities that you can train. So think of, um, uh, one rep max continuum. So uh, one one rep is going to represent 100%. And then as you go along the continuum to 20 reps, these everything in between is going to be working a different system. Got okay, it. so you have strength about one to five rep range. Mm -hmm. We have functional hypertrophy, six to eight rep range, hypertrophy, nine to twelve rep range, and then anything above that is going to be endurance based. Got it. Okay, so within that whole continuum, you could train essentially four different types of qualities through the reps that you select, the sets, the time that the muscle is under tension, your rest periods, all of those are variables that determine how you're going to get the results based on what you want to achieve. Perfect. So that's why you need to start there. Otherwise, you kind of just go into the gym and maybe do a whole bunch of different things, but you're not really focusing on your exact goal, right? So that's like the first thing to determine. That's yeah. like set what, the goal. What do you want to accomplish? And for this yeah. specific um, video, we're talking about fat loss and how we design a 12-week fat loss program. Yeah. So what we're using is a form of periodization called undulating periodization. So her first phase is considered to be accumulation. So this is a lot of volume. So when we're talking about fat loss, we are going to be using a lot of time under tension um, about 1400 plus seconds of total time under tension for the entire workout. So that takes into how many exercises she's doing for her whole workout times the number of sets times the number of reps times the time under tension. 
for each, each rep. So that's gonna give us a total. And what we know with fat loss is from phase to phase, that total time under tension needs to have an, an increase to create a new stimulus, which is going to basically utilize anaerobic enzymes and make them super efficient so that you can burn more fat during that new stimulus. Otherwise your body will adapt to just doing the same thing, right? And that's, and that's why um, we're breaking the 12 week uh, periodization down into four specific phases. So you have two accumulation phases and you have two intensification phases. Intensification phases are going to be lower uh, reps, but greater time under tension per set. So for this specific phase that we're doing, we went from 1400 seconds of total time under tension to about 790 seconds. And now we're doing two specific exercises for the same body part, which is called an agonist superset. So her first exercise is going to be a squat, no rest, and we're gonna go right into a walking lunge. So it extends the time that the muscle is under tension, creating a different stimulus um, and prolonging that working set so that we can um, increase the weight as well for uh, the specific exercises that we're using. And then we're giving a longer rest period too. Whereas before we're using about 60 seconds. Now we go first exercise, so second exercise, and now we're resting for two minutes. So that's kind of uh, like you're recruiting, obviously you're, you're working on like the strength and the hypertrophy, oh, what are the rep ranges gonna be for the second one? The rep ranges are um, eight to 10 and 10 to 12. Exactly. So we're kind of right into like that hypertrophy, yeah. upper end hypertrophy range and a little bit of um, strength endurance as the time uh, under tension extends because of the multiple exercises that we're doing at once. That makes sense. And before we were doing 10 to 12 reps. 10 to 12. Exercises, yeah, and we were using a little bit more rest, well 60 seconds rest in between each one, mm -hmm. and it was uh, divided into an upper body and a lower body split. Got it. And how we're, how we're picking the exercises is we're using um, the compound movements first. So those are gonna be the exercises that are gonna be a little more demanding. So think of chin-ups, dips, squats, um, deadlifts, uh, incline presses, shoulder required. presses. Yeah. yeah, so anything that has a lot of different muscle groups working synergistically to actually make you move, move the weight, um, which is gonna have a bigger radiating effect on the tire body, which we want when we wanna have a fat loss goal. Totally. Right? You wanna have that full, full body stimulating effect. And when you use the compound movements first, you are recruiting higher threshold fibers because it's more demanding on the body, mm -hmm. both mentally and physically and you are fresh at the start of your workout, so you want to use those more technical... That's when you're stronger, more you're not fatigued yet. Yeah, and the exercises are a little more technical, so you yeah. don't want to put them at the end of your workout. That makes You want to put them at the very course. beginning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so how we, how we did it in the first phase is we did um, full body, so upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body, mm -hmm. so eight total exercises, three sets, 10 to 12 reps, and this, the time under tension was all standardized. So it's four zero one zero tempo. That means it takes four seconds to lower the weight. There's no pause in the bottom, one second up, no pause at the top. So that's about um, 50 to 60 seconds of total time under tension per yeah. working set. And our rest periods were 60 seconds. Our rest periods were 60 seconds. And now we've changed the program, dropped the time under tension by half. So we're only doing six exercises but they're agonist supersets. So it goes back to those those muscles that are working are yeah. working a lot harder because it's for the same muscle group with multiple exposures to, to different exercises. I love that. Those are actually like, that's my favorite that I'm, that I'm used to. Like a lot of bikini training is that I would do a lot of burnout sets and stuff like that. So I, for me, it just resonates with me, like going from a squat to lunge right away, which is something that we're gonna do today. Um, I like that. I personally like high paced workouts. So I think that that's, that's a good thing for, for fat loss training, right? Yeah. That as you progress through different phases, you want to shorten like your rest periods. Is that right? Between, um, like between exercises in a sense is that that's kind of what we're doing between one and the other. And then we're resting after the two. Yeah. Right. So that you want, you want to do that so that your body's kind of essentially getting 
some, I mean, I don't want to call it cardio because it's not, it's a different energy system, but it's also getting that like, well, what it, would you it, call it? It, 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 will be, it will be cardio. It will, that's it will cardio. Be cardio. Because you're doing 20 reps. Exactly. So mm -hmm. when you go from a squat and you're using heavier weight to get eight reps and now you're going into walking lunges where you're doing 10 to 12 per leg, you yeah. know, those rep ranges, are uh, the reps are extended right because because of all that time and retention that we have going on yeah so you're gonna feel a very like hard breathing you're that gonna makes get that lactic sense. acid that's gonna start to accumulate even though the workout is short because it's only six six exercises the effect that you're gonna get from it is gonna be prolonged even for 48 to 72 hours afterwards I which is called uh, excess post oxygen consumption so that's how much so how much oxygen your body is actually using after your workout to help with recovery processes and let's also like clarify we can go into detail or we cannot that when you do just steady state cardio you don't get that same after effect than when you lift weights because when you lift weights of course you're you know taxing yourself like through the workout but then you're also going to be burning so many calories your metabolism is going to increase like way after the workout as well yeah exactly so it's like yeah, you it's know like use your after, time of the afterburn right? effect it's called mm -hmm. so your body's just metabolism is so ramped up because of that workout that it takes excess amount of calories to actually kind of like bring you back down to baseline and get your body recovered from that that extreme training so this is why we're obviously we're talking about all this so that we can show you guys how to create a program for fat loss and I just want to make a little parentheses between all this that you guys are going to want to watch next week's video because Malcolm and I are already talking about how we can do a giveaway for you guys because a lot of you have been asking, you know, about like if, if there's going to be like a 12 week program. So we have something exciting coming next week. That's all I'm going to say. But remember, number one, define your principle, your goal. Number two, uh, we said was the uh, define how many rep what your rep ranges is yeah, so based ba on your goal. Yeah, exactly. So based on your goal, mm -hmm. um, each strength uh, quality that you train has a specific rep range. So if it's strength, it's one to five. If it's muscle building, it's six to twelve. If it's endurance, it's twelve plus. Within that, you also have time under tension that each quality can be trained in. So strength is one to twenty. Uh, functional hypertrophy is twenty to forty. Hypertrophy is 40 to 70, strength endurance is 70 plus. Um, and then also the effects are different. So anything towards the left, like strength uh, and functional hypertrophy will be more neural demanding. So it's gonna train your nervous system. And then the other end of the continuum, it's gonna be metabolic. So it's gonna have more uh, fat loss effects, more, more muscle building effects. Um, so it's gonna train a complete end of the uh, spectrums. Got it. Yeah, and then how you can set that up for, for fat loss specifically, is choose exercises no more than eight and alternate between upper body and lower body remember keeping your compound movements at the beginning so maybe choose four compound movements for the upper and lower body that you split between the top four exercises and then maybe the bottom four exercises are isolation exercises for for upper and lower body as well keep those sets between three to four um, if you feel like three is too little increase to four if four is too much go back down to three mm -hmm. keep your rep ranges between 10 to 12 and then keep the time under tension. You can just keep it um, uh, standardized at a four zero one zero tempo. So four is always the lowering phase. Mm -hmm. If there's a zero there, that's going to be a pause, and then one second up, and no pause at the top. Rest periods can be thirty to sixty seconds in between each working set. And that was for the first phase before your body adapts again and before you have to change it up to switch up the stimulus. So that's why now we're having less reps between the supersets, but a little bit more rest after. Exactly. Right? Exactly, yeah. On so this average, is just kind of like for like to start a program. Yeah, it could be a very good start yeah. to a fat loss program. Um, and it could be used from a beginner to an intermediate, even in advanced. Um, so more advanced you should be able to lift a little bit more weight, so it will be demanding um, whoever is using it. Um, also, for um, every four to six workouts, uh, your body is going to adapt to that specific workout. So that's why we're changing the workouts every three weeks because we're going through about four, four to five workouts each workout. Three times per week. Three times per moment. week. So um, on average, people are gonna adapt to four to six workouts. And then you have, that's like the 70% rule. So think of like a bell-shaped curve, 70% of the population is gonna be sitting inside that bell-shaped curve. So every four to six workouts should be changed. Outside of that, you have 15% on each side. 
It could be like a really advanced person who needs to change it every like two to three workouts. Or if you're a beginner, you might be able to use it for eight workouts before your body adapts and, and then you don't see any, any results. So on average, that's how we set it up. Every four to six workouts, we're changing the stimulus, we're changing the variables, we're changing the exercises um, to make sure that we're not gonna stagnate and we're gonna see continuous progress. Totally, and that's that's honestly, I feel like the perfect amount because I've gotten to last week where it was the last workout that we did where I felt, okay, I got stronger, I'm kind of used to these workouts, and then I do feel like it's time now to switch it up. So I think like the three, I mean, I know for sure the three week where it was a perfect amount for that first phase, uh, you know, so that we can continue seeing progress. Yeah, and it also keeps everything exciting. It does, otherwise you, know? you end up being bored, let's exactly. say, oh, we have to do the same so thing. So new exercises, new variations, yeah. new rep ranges, new rest periods, all these different things are like gonna be making your training exciting and make you actually want to go to the gym and, and train, right? Definitely. And, and, and then on top of it, you can see the results, what keeps you motivated, so. And it's great that, you know, this was the first time I ever did a program where I was only in the gym weight training three times per week for the first phase. Uh, so I want to clarify that, you know, with everyone that watches our video, uh, if you, let's say, can only make it to the gym, you know, three times, like it's totally fine. You could still see results because I know that there's a lot of information in the internet where everybody uh, does like a program where they're focusing on each, you know, body part and they, let's say, train five times a week. That is not something that you need to do to see results, right? Just to clarify that. Yeah, and for some people it's not sustainable. And so exactly. why not make the time that you do have in the gym really effective through your training methods and training the full body mm -hmm. if your goal is to lose body fat. Exactly, and that was that's what we did. You know, and I want to promote always doing, if you're following a new program, if you're following a new quote unquote eating style, make sure that it's something sustainable in the long run. It's something that you enjoy because that's gonna that's what's gonna ensure you know results at the end of the day that you actually like can commit to it and you know follow through with it. Otherwise if it's not realistic then it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to stay on there. So again just to clarify you can do three days at the gym. That's what I started with. Now are we gonna do four or five? Four? We're doing, we're doing Three, four. 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 Cool. We're going up. <laughs> Baby steps. I like it. I think I'm ready for that. So uh, is there anything else? I mean, we, we broke it down on how you can design your, you know, fat loss program. And, you know, if you did want to add cardio, just last question, I'm going to ask Malcolm here. If somebody, when should you add cardio within your fat loss goal? Okay. So probably the easiest way to do it for the general population where they're coming in two to three times a week um, and have a regular job yeah. would be to add it after their training session that's just realistic so that you don't have to go twice somebody asked me that right do you have to go to the gym twice so i'm like no you don't have to go yeah. right um and there's different ways that you could implement cardio in so maybe on days that you're not in the gym you could do a higher intensity interval training style. So it might be like 20 seconds of, of all out work followed by 40 seconds of rest or 60 seconds of rest. Yeah. That's gonna affect your glycogen stores a lot more. So that's gonna be the energy that's stored in your muscles and your liver. Whereas you could do, if, if you're new to the gym and you're just beginning, uh, you could do a slower steady state cardio post-workout mm -hmm. um, after your training session to kind of cool the body down and still get a little bit of sweat going kind of like, um, get 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 blood moving and uh, yeah. you know it, it actually increases nutrient partition your body's ability to uptake nutrients post-workout when you do a post-workout yeah I totally agree with you and you know again it comes down to what you can actually make time for what you find enjoyable that's the main thing if you like to go you know split up your workouts I know that when I had more time or when I've had you know to train for a show in the past and stuff like that I actually preferred to split it up so that's something that you can do fasted cardio maybe we'll talk about that in a whole nother video you totally can do fasted cardio or you can do a post-workout those are going to be the two best times though for fat loss because you want to be able to go right into your fat stores for fuel instead of burning through what you just ate right yeah I mean, if, if you have access to um cardio equipment first thing in the morning when you get up by all means yeah. you could do 20 minutes of, of cardio and then train after your work or something like that that would totally. that would be great um 
for the most people, though, whatever is this, it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah they works sometimes just want to go once, yeah. right? Yeah. What do you guys like to do? Do you guys like to go twice or once? Let us know below. <laughs> I like to go once now, but I do enjoy cardio. So I think what eventually I, I want to add in, you know, once the real source gives me the okay, <laughs> I love how I call you by your IG name, is that I want to do cardio on my days off. Yeah. Just because I feel like it gets me energized and when I don't work out, I feel kind of a little bit more lethargic. So we'll talk about that later. But the main thing to focus on for sure is to do weight training is going to be so much better for your fat loss goals overall than just cardio. 100%. So we have to always promote that to that the ladies. 100%. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think every woman has at some point, I mean, I'm one of them. Trust me, ladies. I used to go to the gym and I used to just run and I used to do half marathons. That's how I started getting into um, training in general is before I even weight trained, I just ran. And I was honestly like my body, I was kind of like skinny fat. I was never that tight. I feel like I would just brunch and run. That's like what I loved doing, but I didn't see results in shaping my body until I started weight training. And also the same thing goes with having, you know, that like composition in your body where you want to look tighter. That comes from weight training. That comes from lowering your body fat, but having the muscle there so that you have curves, but you're also, you know, not carrying around extra body fat. Yeah, and it also makes you a fat burning furnace. Totally, more, the more muscle. The more muscle mass you have, so um, for every pound of muscle, it requires about 69 calories from the body to maintain. For every pound of fat, it costs nine calories for the body to maintain. So the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you're burning. Just at rest. Just at rest, um, awesome. which creates a tremendous fat burning effect. And then you can eat more, you can brunch, yeah, and you the, can yeah. feel good. Because you have more muscle mass, you yeah. can actually eat more calories to maintain your body weight. That's really, yeah, that's that's cool. And that's, that's what we want to promote to everyone watching, because I know we have guys and girls that watch, but for both of you guys, if you do want to change your body composition, start there, start with, you know, adding in your weight training. And if you're a beginner, don't even worry because we've all been beginners at some point. Maybe we'll have Malcolm on here at some point telling us how you got started. Because I know the guys on here are probably like, I need to take notes. I want to look like that. <laughs> and ladies, if you have anything that else that we did not cover, then let us know below because we want to promote, you know, just the fact that weight training is a great thing for guys and girls. And with that is going to come your fat loss as well, right? So there you have it. Let's let's get into training. Let's do it. I'm excited for this next phase. Let's do it. I feel like I linger Linger between the words to say eh? To say the words you remember Now we're here to take control Over your body and over your soul We're gonna take back everything and lose it all Lose it all moment to acknowledge Malcolm seriously thank you so much for helping me throughout this process I've, I feel like a new human I feel better uh, my sleep has been better I just feel like more energized <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell and I, I just overall feel that my body composition has improved I don't know if it has but I feel better in my skin 
So thank you so much. And seriously, thank you for all your knowledge. I feel like all of our videos that we're doing, they're a step above because of everything that you're adding to them. So thank you so much. Absolutely. It totally means a lot to me. And I hope that you guys are getting a lot of value from this information. If you are, I said this at the beginning of the video, but seriously, next week, I am along with Malcolm. We're gonna be dropping some really cool news. There might be something in the works right now in terms of a program or something like that that we can provide for you guys. So if that's something that you're interested in and you want to learn more in depth, let us know below and we might just contact you and just see exactly what you guys are looking for because we're trying to build something that is really like awesome for you guys. So let me know below if that's something that you would want, right? Absolutely. Something yeah. something in the works because I have been getting a lot of requests. So thank you guys for watching this and make sure to tune in next week. Bye.